I had my fun run shirt on and I had my number pinned to my chest. I was ready to run. The starting gun went off and I was off like a rabbit right out in front of the head of the pack. I was running strong and fast. I was excited to be running the race. Have you ever done that? You start something new and you are so full of energy and excitement that you go a mile a minute. You do everything, you take everything on, you go fast and you go hard. But what happens? About a half mile into the race, I started regretting eating those two sausage biscuits from Hardee's. My side began to ache, my lungs began to burn, my legs began to feel like rubber. Why was I even in this race? All I got was a t-shirt. Why do I need to finish? Why do I need to continue through this pain? I already have the t-shirt. Wasn't this called a fun run? I'm not having fun. Why am I still running? I wanted to quit the race. Have you ever wanted to quit the race? The marriage started off great, but the honeymoon is now over, and there are bills to pay, a house to clean, kids that need care, and you begin to get tired, and you want to quit the race. You thought volunteering would be great, that you'd get to make a difference, do all these amazing things. You went to the training, you jumped right in, but now it just seems you're doing the menial tasks. It's not what you thought it would be, and you want to quit the race. You started coming to church and you never felt more alive. The music filled you with joy. The sermon filled you with hope. The fellowship filled you with love. It wasn't long before you joined the church, anxious and excited to get more involved. Before long, you're greeting and teaching Sunday school and and serving on a governing board. But then you start resenting spending three nights a week at church. Your ears ring long after Sunday with sounds of complaints that people bring to you about worship and the education program and the color of the carpet because they know you're a leader. You start stressing not only over your family's finances, but the church's. You never knew money played such a big role in a church. Where once you were filled with joy, hope, and love, now you're filled with exhaustion, annoyance, and stress. You want to quit the race. Have you ever wanted to quit the race? The Apostle Paul has a word of encouragement for us this morning from his letter to the church in Philippi. Paul says he has not yet finished his race, so he better keep running. He does not yet fully know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He does not yet fully share in Christ's suffering. He has not yet reached the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. So he keeps running. He presses on. He won't quit the race. My friend George told me he had stopped going to church. It's so nice to have time to sleep in on Sunday, just relax with the family, play golf, or watch football. He had once been very active in church. He was a leader, and now he was quitting. Why, I asked. Why not? I know Jesus. I've asked him into my heart. I trust him as Lord and Savior. I still give money. I lead a good life. What else is there? George thought he had already finished the race and was just waiting for that medal. He thought he'd obtained all he needed to obtain in Christ Jesus. Why press on when you're already at the goal? Personal relationship with Jesus, some good works, some generosity. But is that the goal? Is that the bar we're aiming for? Better yet, is that the finish line set by Christ? The Apostle Paul, after preaching the good news of Christ across the known world, after suffering for Jesus, being thrown in jail for Jesus, still says he has not reached the goal. He refuses to quit the race. And yet here we are thinking, because we got the free t-shirt for running, we're good to go ahead and quit. The prize of the heavenly call of Christ Jesus is more than a participation t-shirt that says, I got baptized and all I got was this t-shirt and my head wet. You got baptized and you received a new life, a brand new calling, a brand new future with no end to run to, and yet we're satisfied with quitting early. We think we've reached the goal. We've got all we need. 
Why not quit the race? But the truth is, we have not yet apprehended, we have not yet reached our goal as a nation, as a community, as a church, as individuals who have been grasped and held by Christ. We have hardly learned the alphabet of grace to say nothing of the language of salvation. We have a long way to go, so much more race to run. But have you ever wanted to quit the race? I don't even know why I was running. It was a fun run at Walnut Grove Plantation in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And my rival, Jay McKenzie, Jamie, was running, so I thought I'd better run too and beat him. Because that's what you do with rivals, right? So I wasn't running for myself. I wasn't running for fun. I was running in spite to spite someone else, to beat someone else. And so when things got hard, it was easier to quit because it didn't really matter. When you race for the wrong reasons, you're not likely to finish for the right reasons. I wanted to quit the race. Why do you come to church? Why do you keep coming? There are plenty of wrong reasons to come to church. Plenty of good reasons. I'm glad you're here, however and why ever you came, but what is the right reason to come to church? Why does God call us into this fellowship, this community? Church attendance is a response. God calls the church into being. We are elected in Christ Jesus. That means we are chosen for a purpose, to be Christ's hands and feet in the world today to be the body of Christ, to be a provisional representation of the kingdom of God on earth, to proclaim God's word, share God's love, and practice God's justice. We are called and chosen to be Christ's body on earth, his hands and his feet. The church isn't a building, it's a movement, it's a race of grace. We are a church to proclaim good news to the poor, Release to the captives, peace to the troubled, love to the lonely, grace to the guilty. We are a church to stand with the marginalized, heal the broken, feed the hungry, love the unloved. We are a church to run God's love and grace to every corner of this world so that every person may know Jesus Christ and the life he offers. Are there still hungry children? We have not finished the race. Is there still hatred and prejudice? Then we have not finished the race. Is there terrorism and violence? Then we have not finished the race. Are there people who wonder if they matter, if they are loved? Then we have not finished the race. And so we press on. We can't quit now because God has called each of us to run for a reason. God called us to church. We were called and we were chosen and we responded. We said yes to the invitation, yes to the privilege, yes to the purpose. We said yes to adoption as God's sons and daughters. We said yes to the love and grace of God. Our race, our church membership is a response, a grateful response to all God has done for us and what God invites us into. I quit the race. I was burned out. I wasn't prepared, I was tired, I wasn't running it for the right reasons. So I quit. I walked off the course and headed for the snack bar to relax. The race was about me, so I took care of me with a nice cold slushy. Have you ever quit the race? The next year I was invited to run in a race, a different kind of race, a relay. It was a relay for life. I was invited and chosen to be on a team from my school that would run all night to raise money for cancer research, to bring hope to cancer survivors, to remember those who finished the race. My grandmother and grandfather had died of cancer. I wanted to run. I wanted to run in their memory. I wanted to run so other people's lives weren't cut short. I wanted to run all night because I know hardship may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. And there are so many people in the long night of cancer who need the sun to break over the horizon. I was chosen to run. 
I was called to run, and I said, yes, I will run this race. I'm running for the right reasons. I'm running for more than myself. It's not about me. It's about my response. So I will run. I will not quit the race. I will finish the race. Have you ever been invited to run? Have you heard God's call to be a part of God's family, to use the gifts God has given you as part of the body of Christ to share God's love and grace? Have you heard that you've been chosen by God to be God's beloved child? Did you know you were chosen to know and share the light and the joy that death and darkness cannot overcome? Did you know that you have been chosen to receive unmerited, unmatched, unrelenting, unconditional grace? Will you respond by being part of God's family, by serving God with gratitude, giving to God with generosity, worshiping God with gladness? It's not easy. Paul could tell you. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He said, come and die with me, not come and be really comfy with me. He didn't say, come and be served with me, but come and serve with me. He didn't say, come and hear only your favorite type of music for an hour each week. He didn't say, come and participate well, when it kind of suits you. He said, come and follow me with your whole life. Paul says, I press on, sometimes in bondage, sometimes free, sometimes in sun, sometimes in rain, sometimes with friends, sometimes with enemies, but I press on. Will you press on and run and finish the race, sometimes feeble, sometimes failing, sometimes crawling, sometimes crying, but press on. Press on in good days and press on in bad days. Press on when the world seems to be standing still, and the world seems to be leaving you behind. Press on toward Christ and finish the race. It was 1992 in Barcelona for the Summer Olympics. Derek Redman arrived determined to win a medal in the 400. The color of the medal was meaningless. He just wanted to win one. Just one. He had been forced to withdraw from the 400 at the 1988 games in Seoul only 10 minutes before the race because of an Achilles tendon injury. He then underwent five surgeries over the next year. Derek's father, Jim, had accompanied him to Barcelona just as he did for all world competitions. They were as close as a father and son could be. Inseparable, really. The day of the race arrives, father and son reminisce about what it took for Derek to get to this point. They talk about ignoring past heartbreaks, past failures. They agree, if anything bad happens, no matter what it is, Derek has to finish the race. Period. And so they line up in their starting blocks, and the race begins. Tom Hammond and Craig Mass back, back at Olympic Stadium in Barcelona, coming up to the men's 400 meter semifinals. Here are the lane assignments. Steve Lewis in lane three. Top four to Wednesday's final. Steve Lewis in lane three. Roberto Hernandez out quickly in four. Now down the back stretch. Ismael on the left of the screen is running very, very quickly. And inside of Lewis, Sunday Bada of Nigeria. And Derek Redman of Great Britain has pulled up with an injury. Redman is out. Derek Redman, the British record holder and an important member of that British 4x400 four meter relay team as he doesn't want anybody to help him. It'll be Lewis to win in 44.50. Look at this, he's going to try to finish his semi-final race. The British have a certain tradition of running, which you have to respect. A 
bizarre finish to this first semifinal in the men's 400 meters. Derek Redmond of Great Britain pulled up with an injury halfway down the back stretch. He's fighting off those trying to help him to finish the race in his lane. And now the pain too much. swelling throughout Olympic Stadium as Redmond with assistance this time approaches the finish line he had wanted so desperately to reach. That is the Olympic spirit. Did you notice when the it panned out, and he was limping. You could see just that figure in white coming down from the stands, pushing past security guards, getting to his son in pain, trying to finish the race. They wanted to pull him off the course. His dad said, oh no, he's going to finish. I'm not letting you pull him off the course. They pressed on. They were close with every painful, heart-wrenching step. They were closer to the goal. They were going to finish the race. And they crossed the finish line together. Father and son collapsed in each other's arms. We will finish the race. I know what it is to dampen the pillow some nights with tears. I know what it's like to be burnt out and tired and wondering if this whole church thing is even worth it. I even know what it is to want to quit the race. In fact, I almost left ministry 13 years ago, had another job all lined up. It can be hard. We know life can be very difficult, very painful, very heart-wrenching, very tragic. We watch the news, but press on. The world needs you, the church, to press on in faith, press on in hope, press on in love. Press on, today the battle shout, but tomorrow the victor's song. Press on, there's a bright side somewhere, don't you stop until you find it. Press on knowing nothing. Nothing can keep your heavenly Father from your side to run that waste with you, behind you, in front of you, holding you up, not height nor depths, nor angels or principalities, rulers or things to come. Nothing on heaven or earth, not even death, can separate God from seeing you across that finish line. So press on, church. Press on to the goal. Press on to Christ. Press on to your salvation. Press on to what you have been called and chosen for, to be Christ's church, Christ's body, Christ's hands and feet, the house, the family of God, salvation, new life, abundant life, loving life here, now, and forevermore. Remember to finish the race. Remember to press on. And remember, you never, you never run alone. There will always be someone to finish with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, thank you that you are a God with us and for us. You run the race with us, sometimes pushing us from behind, clearing the path ahead, or just holding us up. Thank you for your encouragement. Give us the strength and the perseverance to finish the race even when it gets hard, and to press on toward you and your love and your grace. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.